And we're in a series called Jesus the King. Searching for Jesus in the book of John as the king. And as we were searching for him as the king encountered um, in John chapter 20, where Jesus says, I must go to the father, my father, your father, which activated a thought of the king, uh, of Jesus being king, sets himself up to be a son, a son of God. And as we started to look into that, we started to realize that there are some things that the king does, Jesus says he does as king, that he, that he introduces us to, and specifically, primarily, his father. And as we started to look at that, I, I really engaged this father idea. And just to give you a picture of, of how much this means to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little story. When I was a kid, I would lay down in bed, and, and some, I don't know if it was guilt or if it was actually hell opening. Um, but I used to feel like I was falling and falling and falling and falling and falling. How many of you ever felt like you'd lay in bed and you were just falling and falling? I had those moments where I was just falling and falling. And, and I would get up and I'd lean to next to the bed and I would pray. And I'd say, oh, Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of all of our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And that was the only way I could get back in the bed. So I felt like I was going, being pulled to hell. I think there's a movie called that, Being Pulled to Hell. Maybe there, maybe there is. Maybe, maybe there should be. I don't know. Um, but I remember that. And then, and then, and then, I, would, then, then I, I was, years later, wanted to talk about how much the Lord's Prayer meant to me. And I started to study the Lord's Prayer as I started to write a book. And I started to write a book on the Father. And actually, I was writing the book on the Lord's Prayer. But then when I read the first line, Our Father... I stuck on that in 88 pages later on Our Father. And I realized that Our Father is an inexhaustible subject when it comes to God. That Our Father is such a mind-blowing subject that I couldn't even get to, hallowed be your name. 88 pages, 88 full pages. Not like pages with double spaces, full pages of actual writing content on just about the Father. I haven't even, I put the book down and didn't touch it again. I was like, I can't even deal with this. The Lord's Prayer is never going to come out of me for the, in the book. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. So I got stuck on that Our Fathers. I started to meditate this week on what to share and whether or not we should just go into the spirit of adoption like we did last week or if we had to step back into the spirit of an orphan. Uh, the Lord put in my heart, he says, I want you to talk about the behavior of an orphan. The behavior of an orphan is probably, probably really intense because we all have maybe a sense of uh, orphan spirit when it comes to God because he says so clearly when he says, I'm leaving, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit of truth to you and I will not leave you as orphans. So he's saying that everyone, not, want, not because you grew up in a messed up family, but the whole world is, is in the orphan spirit. The whole world has a spirit of an orphan. And as, as, I be, as we looked at last week, he said this, uh, this the scripture last we looked at last week, it says, you've not, been, uh, you've not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear. How many know the spirit of bondage unto fear? I, I, you know, as we look at that word bondage again, let me give you the definition that I pulled out last week, because I mean this week. That, that word bondage, uh, it means devoid of buoyancy of spirit. That when, that when you, bondage is the inability to bounce back. It's the inability to float above things. It's the inability to, now just think, so he says, I've not given you the spirit of, of being flat, of being without the resilience on the inside of you to come back from stuff. But that's this, because if you, if you can't come back from something, then you're afraid of everything. A person is only afraid of this virus because they don't think they can come back from it. But when you know that you are not the bound one, but I'm the adopted one, the I've been brought into a family that only bounces back. Think about God, God's creative power. God's creative power. The, I mean, he had, a, he had a, a company split in heaven. 
he lost a third of his employees. Took a third of his angels. And yet he had no problem bouncing back. He, he, he was crucified on the earth and came back out of the grave. He had no power. No, no, and the Bible says it was impossible for him to be held by the thing. I want you to know you've been, you've been adopted into a family of bounce backers. You have the spirit of buoyancy. And it, the, the scripture says that he uses this, this I will not leave you which is the word, I will, I will actually not shoo you away or send you away. I will not leave you. So at, in one aspect, when, when it's, I can, I can leave you, and that's that same word, or I can go, go away from me, and that's that same word. But he says, I will not leave you as orphan. And this word is associated to, like, going, get away, or I'm going away from you. But it's that word, leave. And he says, I will not leave you as orphans. But he says, but I have come that you should have life and life abundantly. Are you tracking with me? Life and life abundantly. And then I'm going to do this wonderful thing. I'm going to adopt you and I'm going to bring you into my family so that you have the spirit of bounce back. Returning from something that looked like it was going to destroy you. I love, I love that healing power. Can I tell everyone, every one of you, you have the power to return from whatever the enemy planned for you? And so I was like, Lord, what is this idea of this, 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 this what is this behavior, this behavior of an orphan? You know, behavior of an orphan is pretty intense. And so he, he again, Matthew 6, let's read it together. It says, in the same manner. When his disciples came and said to him, Lord, how do we pray? He says, in this manner, therefore pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, or your kingdom come, your will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us, of our, forgive us our debts and as we forgive our debtors. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the... And the power and the glory forever. So as I started to meditate, and I, it, 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 kicked, it kicked in that again, that the, the whole subject of this prayer starts with Father. That, that this prayer is a contradiction to an orphan spirit. This prayer all by itself says, if you can pray this way, you are actually attacking the spirit of, of an orphan in your life. That the power of the Lord's prayer is that you are no longer far from him and you're not an orphan, but you are the adopted and you have the power to cry out and let that crying out that's inside of you say, Abba, Abba, Father. L let's look at Lamentations because Lamentations is one of the first places you actually see the word orphan translated. You see it and it says, remember, oh Lord, and, and Lamentations is the book of sorrow and, 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 and weeping. But look what it says. Remember, O oh Lord, what has come upon us. Can I teach a little bit today? I already preached, so we can do a little teaching. It says, uh, what has come upon us? Look and behold our reproach. The first thing that you'll recognize is, is the word here is reproach, which is the same rejection. I think the foundation underlining um, spirit of an orphan is the spirit of rejection. The, the spirit of rejection, that even if you... Uh, for whatever reason, are in this position where you don't have, that it's, it will either breed or activate a spirit of rejection. Underline. But let's look at reproach. Let's look at the next, verse 2. Our inheritance has been turned to, over to aliens. The next thing is that you don't have an inheritance. There's no, there's no inheritance. One thing passed down to another. Then it says has been turned over to aliens. And I, you guys have to, you guys writing or watching? Or, and, I, and our houses to foreigners. So, so that means your inheritance and your home are all turned over. Look what the next verse, verse 3 says. 
we have become orphans and waifs. Our mothers are like widows. So this is where you see the real definition of an orphan. A real definition of an orphan is not that you lack a mother, but that you lack a father. The real definition of an orphan is someone who does not have a father. In actual actuality, when you watch this, when you look at this, this word orphan and you look up the word orphan in the, in the Old Testament, it literally only comes up as orphan four times. The rest of the time, it comes up as fatherless. The fatherless, 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 the fatherless. So when you can pray our father... It means you're no longer fatherless. Come on, somebody, which means you haven't, you're no longer reproached or rejected, which means you no longer have a lack of inheritance, which means you no longer have a lack of homes. Homes. Come on, homes. Homes, homes. Let's look at the next verse. I, I think we can go. And we pay for, this is what the orphan says, we pay for water. That we pay for our own water to drink and we pay for our, for, we pay for, we, our wood comes at a price. So the things that would be normally provided are no longer provided, but they have to be, they have to be paid for. In verse 5, it says, and they pursue at our heels and we labor and have no rest. So this means that there's no one to defend. One of the things that Abraham w- was asking the father is that, listen, I know that I went against all these kings and I need a son in my house. The only one in my house is Eleazar. And I need someone in my house because when these guys pursue, I need to be a father to something that can fight back. When you, are, when you, have, a, when you have a father and you have a son relationship or father and daughter relationship, there is a power of fighting that you don't have to fight for yourself, a power of laboring. Come on, somebody, that you don't have to labor for yourself. A power of resting that you don't have to. Verse 6. This is just lamentations. And we have given our hand to the Egyptians. We have to become, we have to shake hands and, and make covenants with the world. And the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Are you seeing this, what I'm seeing? Verse 7, I, I don't think we went to verse 7. It's, a, it's not a good life for, a, for someone who d- is, is fatherless. I grew up fatherless. I grew up with a stepfather, not knowing my father. I'm, I, I'm not even talking about in the natural right now, although I do have that relationship of not having someone. I grew up without really a spiritual father. Even though I grabbed someone and said, you're my spiritual father, I have fed into their lives more than they fed into mine. You understand? But the realization is this. We don't have to do this because we can pray. Our father. I love that we can pray our father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Holy is your name. We pray this every time we get in the car. If you've ever been in the car with me and my family, and one of the first things we do, we get in the car, we pray the prayer, our Father who is in heaven, one of the children, one of the kids pray, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I believe it saves our lives because we no longer take what we're going to do in the car from that moment as if we are on in control, but we surrender and submit our whole walk, our whole life to a father that watches over us, guides us. You don't know how many car accidents we've been saved from because we get in the car praying our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. It sounds like a religious thing and people don't understand. And we have people even laugh when they're in the car with us. But the fact is it saves our lives. It saves us because we know we have a father who is watching over us, who's going to keep the, that off of our heels, is going to provide for us, going to take care of us. Yeah. Yeah. 
Before we get, in, we get in the car, we do that. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of all of our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, you listen to these words, deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. And then we take on the armor of God. We take upon the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the boots of peace. I could go through all. We take upon the helmet of salvation so that our minds are sound and saved. We take upon the breastplate of righteousness so that our hearts are covered with righteousness. We have no bitterness, unforgiveness in our hearts. We take upon the belt of truth that we can live in truth, walk in truth, be in truth. We know when lies are told to us, we know when truth is told to us. We have the boots of peace that wherever we go, we are the answer. We are the ones, yeah, we carry the peace wherever we go. We have the sword of the spirit that we are able to wield and cast down everything. And we have the shield of faith that resists every power of the enemy. We take upon the cloak of justice to know that we stand for righteousness. And we take upon the garments of praise that overcomes the spirit of heaven. This is what we do in the car when we get in the car every day. Every time we sit in the car. Every time we sit in the car. If you guess in my car, you do it too. See, because without, I, I only have these standards because my grandmother taught me. My grandfather wasn't saved, but my grandmother said, before you leave, let's pray. Every time I leave the house, she yelled, let's pray. And she go, our father who is in heaven. Every time we go on the plane, she will walk me to the plane. I remember six years old, she walked me to the plane and, and she'd go and she'd grab the pilot. This is when the doors were open. <laughs> she grabbed the pilot and she go, we're going to pray. And he'd be like. And all of a sudden she get the hand of the pilot and hand of me. I'm six years old. She's going to release me into his hands. You know she's going to release him into God's hands. He's going to have a father right now. You may not have a father, Mr. Pilot, but you're going to have a father right now. I'm talking about legacy here. I'm talking about legacy. Because what I do in the car is a legacy. It's a one thing passed down. Starts with my granny. I don't know where she got it from, but I remember she grabbed that pilot and she says, Our Father who is in heaven. She's, she's, she wasn't Pentecostal, so she didn't do what I would do now. I'm like, She was seven day Adventist. So she said, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is. I would have been like, ah, In the name of Jesus. Like, ah, and then Jesus. Cause it made somebody. I would have broke out in tongues and when I think of his goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about that Citadel Church? That radical wild church. She grabbed him, and all of a sudden, this guy had a father in heaven. She prayed that prayer, and I get in the car with my kids, and they pray the prayer. And I'm hoping they'll get in the car with their kids, and they'll pray the prayer. This week, I was in the car with Yosef, and I said at the end, and Lord, I take upon this javelin. And he goes, is that new? <laughs> I, said, I said, yes. I said, Yes. We're, we're adding on to it. God said he gave us a javelin a couple of weeks ago. He gave us a, a spear. And so I said, I take upon this javelin in the name of Jesus. And we start proclaiming. We're going to proclaim it. He goes, is that new? I'm like, yeah, that's new, son. We're going to start throwing javelins. I ordered one. You'll see it next couple. You'll see it in the next couple of weeks. I'll bring it. Let you see it. I was hoping to have it today, but it didn't come in time. So. But how many of you know it's important that you have this prayer in your life? Because it's, it's the Lord's prayer, but I think it's the anti-orphan prayer. Let me, let, me read, let, me, let me read what it would sound like if it actually wasn't a father involved. It would say, I am fatherless orphan with no legacy or inheritance. I lack a family name and culture. I'm, able, I'm unable to cry out Abba to anyone. My life is a life of prayerlessness without conviction nor repentance. My limited perspective leaves me short-sighted and narrow. I don't have a kingdom perspective on earth nor in heaven. 
I have, I have to seek my own will and order my own steps. My days are filled with lack, and lack of provision and self-sufficiency. My heart is filled with unforgiveness, contempt, and anxiety. I have no relief from debt, and I hold others to theirs. I live, in, I live a, in insecure and unguided life. My feet are led into attempting yet never finishing. My lot is self-doubt, and I have no one to rescue and deliver me from evil, hardships, calamities, and disease. I cannot give honor but live in the pit of pride. I am bound to a temporary existence. Now, if you, that's, the, that's the absolute opposite of our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who sinned against us or debts against us. Lead us not into temptation. The word temptation is attempting. Lead us not into attempting, but deliver us from all evil, which is evil always makes you fall short, keeps you from finishing. For, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. You know what I notice in some of the modern translations, they take that part out. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. That's a pride that wants to remove the glory from the Father we're praying to. The Father that we're trusting to help us. That's just the absolute opposite of the prayer is the behavior of an orphan. You guys got quiet. That's an ugly, ugly opposite, isn't it? I don't need to read it again, do I? <laughs> How many going to pray the Lord's Prayer every day? I'm praying. Some of you are praying it right now. Our Father who's in heaven. <laughs> You're praying it under your voice. And some are not paying attention anyways. But I understand that. If you're an orphan, you don't actually think that these things matter. The realization is the orphan spirit, the orphan spirit is overcome by our Father in heaven. The legacy is established when we understand that he is in his name is above every other name. That we are overcome short-sightedness and limitation by having a kingdom perspective and an understanding that his will must be done. We, we overcome lack of provision and self-sufficiency when we understand that he gives us this day our daily bread. We overcome unforgiveness and contempt and anxiety by saying, I forgive, I send away, which is the same word, I will never leave you. That word leave is the same word as send away. I send away debts. I send them away. I send away unforgiveness. I'm not going to let you live. I send away. I send away. I send away our debts as we have sent away debt off of others. What I am, we handle unguided living by understanding that he leads us, but not into attempting, but to finishing. Is this fun? I find it to be fun. He's, we, we get rid of the, the orphan position of not being rescued by understanding that he delivers us from the evil one. The word evil in its, in its translation is the word hardship. Hardship, calamities, and disease. Aren't you glad that he, re, he delivers you from hardships? Calamities. Do you know what calamities are? It's when you stub your toe. That's a calamity. I mean, you may not think that's a calamity, but for me, for the five minutes that I'm rolling on the floor, that's a calamity. I don't want that calamities. I don't believe accidents get the chance to happen in my life. Come on, is there anyone else that you will pray this prayer? Because accidents don't get a chance to happen in my life. I'm not living the attempted life. I'm living the directed life, the guided life. I'm living the life that's on fire by God. Come on, a life on fire for God. 
that I'm rescued from hardships and calamities and disease, that he rescues me, that I, I'm free from a lack of honor and pride because yours is the kingdom. <laughs> yours is the power and yours is the glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It's never mine. It's yours, oh God. Isn't that wonderful? Mark 14 says this. And, woo, Mark 14 says this, verse 34 says, Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Jesus is saying this, Stay here and watch. And he went a little farther. And he fell on, his, on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, that the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father. In this understanding that Jesus is in such a state, he says, I'm so sorrowful, I'm so sad, I'm overwhelmed with what I have to do and what's set before me. He cried out, Abba, Father. It's amazing that he knew he had a father to pull on. When it got tough, you and I need to know that we have a father to pull on. When it gets tough, that you're not an orphan. Amen. We fight for legacy. We battle for it. It's important for us. Why is it so important? Because when you are, the whole earth is, has no legacy in mind. I mean, can I tell you something? Honestly, I am encountering so many pastors that have no succession. So many pastors that have no succession. Pastors that have churches of multiple thousands. They have no succession. No one to take over what they're working on. Because the whole earth has no spirit of legacy. It's going to be one of the most popular used words in the next season. But it's only because it masks the fact that it's not there. It's a mask. When the world starts to use certain words, it's a word to mask what's actually missing in the root system. The biggest battle in this next season for us is to truly have this prayer in place and understanding that Jesus is saying, I finished my work, you're my succession. You're my succession. If he didn't have, if, if, if we can't be the succession of Jesus, everything he did was in vain. It's all in vain. It's all vanity. It's worthless. It disappears. It goes away. It's because you and I sit in a room and we go, our father as well. That his life makes a difference. You guys track it with me. So he's in, he's in this moment. And he's asking them to stay with him. And I, I, I don't want to, I like drama, so I don't want to dramatize this. But <laughs> he's in this, he's, I don't like drama. You know that about me. I don't, you know I don't like drama. I'm an anti-drama person. I can't stand it. I do like dramas, like TNT, drama, right? Right? <laughs> he's, he's saying, stay here. I'm going to step over here a little while. And then he goes and he goes and prays. Look what it says. And he cries out, Abba, Father. When he cries out, Abba, Father, he says this, Abba, Father. He says, Father, I want you to know that all things are possible for you. How many of you know that that's what we should have in God? A knowledge that everything's, everything's possible for him. But it doesn't mean everything he's going to do. All right, you guys didn't like that part. Take this cup. Someone say, take this cup away from me. Now, this is the bounce back. You ready for the bounce back? Nevertheless. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, man, come on, somebody. Dun, dun. Nevertheless. You have to know that the Abba Father activates a nevertheless in you. Not my will, but.
but your will be done. I'm not willing to fight for my will in this, but your will be done. When you, when you have a father, his will should be above yours. When he becomes your father and you cry, Abba, Father, his will becomes superior to yours. Amen? And you should know that he says, nevertheless, I want you to know you have inside of you a resilience. You go, but you don't know what I've been going through, Pastor. I know I don't know. But Jesus had a joy that was set before him that caused him to call upon the name of the Father. And that caused him to say, I'm sorrowful, I feel sad, I feel horrible, but nevertheless. I'm not, do, it's not working the way I want it to, and I, but nevertheless. How many you know there's a bounce back with an? But nevertheless. <laughs> not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping. I, you see my, my voice change. He found them sleeping. Like Jesus was saying it that way. They're sleeping. He, he didn't. I don't think he came that way. That was just me reading into it, narrating. Then he came and found them sleeping. And said to Peter, Simon. Which he only calls him Simon when he's in trouble. <laughs> Simon, are you sleeping? There's a question mark after it. Like, could you not watch just one hour? See, see, because Simon, you're, you're not actually, you're falling into temptation. You're attempting, but not finishing. Verse 38, watch and pray, lest you enter into a tempting and never finishing. Temptation. You think I'm, trans I'm translating a word, which we say temptation, but he says this is a temptation. Temptation is something that brings you into not finishing what you start. That's what a temptation does. It draws you aside. It's what makes a heart deferred is because you get distracted from what the real the temptation is. I'm going to go over here. See, we think temptation is falling in the sin, but it's not about the sin. Temptation is about what you left. He says, watch and pray, lest you enter into attempting and not finishing. The spirit indeed is willing. How many know your spirit is so willing? But the flesh is weak. The spirit, your spirit is willing. And I think if we can ever tap into the willing spirit and just say shut up to our flesh. Just tell the flesh to shut up. The flesh has so many appetites. I mean, so many appetites. I mean, not just buffalo wings. It has all kinds of appetites. I mean, there's lots of appetites that just the flesh is wanting. And we just need to say, shut up, flesh. My spirit is willing. And so I'm going to shut you up by saying, Abba, Father. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven again. He says, but the flesh is weak. How many of you know your flesh is going to always be weak? You, you can lift weights, but your flesh is weak. It gives in to distraction. It gives in to distraction. It doesn't give in to finishing. So it says here, again, he went away and prayed and spoke the same words to his father. Take this cup from me. Do you know things... Things in your life can be hard. But do you know that there's always a father? That you can say, Abba. That maybe that that's the reason he, he is your father. 
that he says, hey, this is the way you're going to pray. If you're going to pray, I have a prayer that covers everything you're ever going to deal with. Our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. You guys receive this today? I want to I wanna just pray that. Can, I just, can we all just pray that moment? And then I'm going to ask Pastor Matt and Pastor Maggie to come up. We're going to pray over them. But how many of you know that there's, there's an important thing for you that you learn this prayer? I wish I could leave you and I'm like, yeah, well, you prayed you. But there's kind of an assignment here that you actually learn to pray the Lord's Prayer so that it breaks an orphan spirit off of your life and allows you to step into what God has for you. Amen? God has things for you. So let's pray this together. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.